morning everyone uh, we will wait uh, for a few minutes uh, before everyone uh, joins i can all, uh, now see uh, many attendants in the uh, waiting room uh, we'll wait for a couple of minutes thank you for your participation thank you morning once again we will uh, start in uh, less than one minute uh, i can see uh, attend is uh, entering the uh, webinar room uh, 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 for a general instruction kindly use a question and a tab for any questions uh, we will uh, attend to the uh, each and every questions once the presentation is over uh, and if if there is any query uh, we request you to put it in the question answer tab thank you Good morning once again. Uh, this is an official welcome uh, to this webinar by uh, Bhuvanesh Oza. Uh, this is uh, Apurva Oza uh, from Adapni, and I'll uh, give this floor to uh, Bhuvanesh Oza. Uh, once the presentation is over, uh, we will open the floor for any questions and answers. Uh, please use the question and attempt for any uh, queries within the uh, presentation. We'll uh, attend each and every at the end of the webinar. Thank you. The floor is all yours. Yep. Start. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to speak today purely just to introduce what all is there in our system protection. Uh, we Details of each topic can be taken up some other time. So, for this time, I'll be taking only power system. I mean, just introduction to power system protection. Uh, my WhatsApp numbers are in front of you. If all you want to note down, you can. My email address also is there. Uh, today there will be question and answer session, but afterwards also, if you find like asking any questions, you are most welcome. So we start with a very simple, so to say a very primitive power system. The power system prevalent in uh, Gujarat state or India or for that matter anywhere in the world is quite uh, complicated it is an interconnected power system and the protective 
relaying system in an interconnected system once again will be little bit more complicated. But to start with, uh, you can see that there is an 120 megawatt generator which produces power at 11 kV. It's not necessary 11 kV. The standard voltages are 15.75 kV, 11 kV, 13.8 kV, 22 kV. But that power has to be stepped up because we cannot transmit this high current. 120 megawatt 11 kV would be somewhere around 7500 MPS. So we step it up as you well know, right? We would want to reduce the copper losses. Therefore, it is stepped up to say 220 kV. I am I'm saying say because 220 kV is the uh, optimum voltage at which we should transmit. But if the power is more and the distance is more, probably 400 kV would be the optimum voltage. But right now, we go at 220 kV. Power is transmitted at 220 kV to a receiving substation. It is stepped down to 66 kV. It may be stepped down to 132 kV also uh, if the optimum, that would be uh, most economical voltage is 132 kV. But here I have assumed 66 kV. Uh, this power uh, is coming to a distribution substation where there is 66 by 11 kV transformer. And then 11 kV feeders are going to different areas uh, and 11 kV feeder is terminated on pole mounted transformer or distribution transformer as it is known as 11 kV by 415 volt and final 415 volt distributors feed power to the final consumer side. This is a, a very simple power system generation at one end and load at the other how pictorially it looks like on left side is a generator middle one is transmission and the last one right side is the distribution power system is generation transmission and distribution uh, power is generated and received by the consumers <laughs> right and if at all it operates normally there is no problem but faults are inevitable. One cannot avoid faults, right? Faults do occur. Faults always occur. There are many reasons for the faults. The different types of faults are triple line to ground, double line, double line to ground, line to ground. Open circuit is a kind of uh, abnormality which is known as single phasing. That means one of the wires out of the three phases is disconnected because of some reason. So if I see the different types of faults, then there are 10. I have listed down RYBG, RYYB, DR, etc. There are 10 different kinds of faults. So how do these faults occur? Physically, how would the faults occur? Three phase two ground fault can occur like this. I hope the figure has reached you because I am changing the figure very fast, but it takes time in air to reach to you. Uh, the transmission line is going. Every transmission line is always having an earthing switch. Right? As uh, if somebody wants to maintain, the electrical staff wants to maintain the line, or if the fault is to be rectified, then the line staff has to climb on the transmission tower and do the work on line. One cannot work on live line. Therefore, obviously, circuit breaker is required to be made off. But even if you make the circuit breaker off, uh, one should not go on line because there will be trapped charges. You do not know when you have made the circuit breaker off. Voltage wave is passing, AC voltage wave. Whether you have made it off at zero voltage or maximum voltage or which instant of voltage, I don't know. So, the trapped and trapped charges will go to zero, no doubt. But it will be very slow process because the uh, DC resistance of transmission line insulators is of the order of 
400, 500 mega ohms and therefore it would take many minutes to go to uh, 0 exponentially. So, what is done is a thing switch is made on, then only line staff will work. Now, while recharging the line, if obviously the process is earthing switch is to be made off and then the circuit breaker is to be made on. But if somebody makes a mistake, earthing switch is on, if I make the circuit breaker on, then it is three line to ground fault. This is very rarely possible because there is an interlock between circuit breaker and earthing switch such that if the earthing switch is on, you cannot make breaker on. That means even if you push the push button to make the circuit breaker on, your trial will go in waste, right? So, this kind of uh, interlocking mechanism is there. But protection engineer always thinks of the possibility that this interlocking mechanism might also fail. This is one thing. Another thing, earthing switch at the another end. If the far end of the transmission line is on and circuit breaker here at sending end I am making on. So that will, uh, that will give me triple line to ground fault and there is no interlock between circuit breaker at sending end and a thing switch at the receiving end. So this is three phase to ground fault. Line to ground fault would occur like this. Because of lightening stroke or switching surge the voltage of line in case of lightening surges it can go to a value as bad as 1000 kV, 1000 kV that is line is 132 kV or 220 kV right. So the uh, air around the insulator will not be able to withstand this voltage and there will be flash over as shown from line, live line to earth transmission tower that is line to ground fault. If it is a uh, switching such, the voltage can be as bad as 6 times line to neutral voltage of the system. So, this is how the uh, line to ground fault occurs. It is said that 85 percent of the faults are due to this reason, line to ground fault. And these are self healing. Uh, it is transient fault. It, the arc occurs, but the lightning goes away and then arc gets quenched after about 300 millisecond. Usually a typical time is about 300 millisecond, 0.3 second. The arc will be quenched because now normal voltage is established. Therefore, this has not to be repaired. This kind of fault is not to be repaired. It's a transient fault. Uh, the breaker is once again made on <coughs> and breaker will stay on. Breaker will not if breaker does not become off by protective system, then we have to take it for granted that it was a transient fault. Right? So, this is just, I mean, I, I just gave an example of how the faults can occur. Actually, faults can occur because of <coughs> innumerable, innumerable reasons, many reasons. These are occurring because of many number, n number of reasons. And if I teach you 100 reasons, and if you go to the field, you will find 101st reason. So, it is a duty of a, every field engineer to analyze the situation. Here, today, the time does not permit. Some other day, we can take up many case studies. Many case studies are reported to me every week how the faults are occurring. So, faults can occur because of many reasons, cannot be counted. But beyond the faults, the abnormalities also can occur. Overloading can occur in all equipments. Equipment may become overloaded. The current passing through the equipment is more than its rated current. In generators, it can be field failure, unbalanced loading, over voltage. In induction motors, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, in, in generator itself, motoring, pole slipping and overheating uh, and in induction motor, overloading, single phasing, stalling, under voltage. In transformers, it is overfluxing, overloading and overheating. So, these are the abnormalities. These are not faults. Faults means current passing through undesirable path. 
here in all these cases current is not passing in undesirable path but all these abnormalities are harmful to the equipment damaging to the equipment therefore what all we can do is <coughs> <coughs> what are the consequences of force? Consequences of force are destruction or partial damage to the equipment, voltage will drop, loss of revenue, quite a lot much of revenue will be lost. If I take for if I take a case of some 200 megawatt plant which is closed for one hour due to fault, then 200,000 kilowatt becomes 2 lakh of units. If I take just 6 rupees per unit, then I am use, I'm losing. If I am an electricity board owner, then I am losing 12 lakhs of rupees per hour. That's a big loss of revenue. The industries are losing production. Power system becomes instable. That is the greatest consequence of the fault. The complete power system will become instable and it can lead to cascaded tripping. Cascaded tripping occurred in the occurred in the year 2012 in northern and northeastern grid. Well, about 22 states were dark; they did not receive power, and power could be resumed after uh, four to five hours. I mean, power resumption is not that fast. The western region people were saved because we islanded ourselves somehow. Right? So, power system instability is the uh, greatest co uh, consequence of the fault. What is the remedy? Remedy is you can isolate the faulty section from rest of the LD system. So this remedy is power system protection. To isolate the faulty section from rest of the LD system is what is known as power system protection and uh, I have to talk about some 60 to 70 hours to uh, teach or to talk about how to do this most selectively and fast. We have to isolate the section very fast and very selectively. Selectively means only the smallest faulted portion has to be isolated. Right? The healthy system should work as it is. The remnant of the LD system should not be isolated. That is very difficult and that point is addressed by that is very high speed and very good selectivity, very nice selectivity, very good availability of the power system, very good reliability. All these properties of power system protection are addressed by modern numerical relays and therefore it is duty of all of us electrical engineers who are working in the field, who are teaching, who are learning to learn this most modern numerical relays because all old relays are becoming obsolete. The electromagnetic relays are not manufactured by manufacturers and many industries, most of the industries have stopped. Those who have electromechanical relays are in the process of retrofitting. Uh, we will be learning protection using most modern numerical relays. So we start with protection of transmission lines using overcurrent and earth fault relays. I am just giving an outline what all can be learnt under this subject. What all are the topics which can be learned under the topic of power system protection. So simple radial feeder once again which, which we started with, I have added relays in this right, 11 kV generator, a typical uh, specification 11 kV 120 megawatt, stepped up by generator transformer 11 by 132 kV, then I have got a transmission line 132 kV transmission line <coughs> which you can see is protected by a relay R1. But because you are passing, we are passing some current of 1000 ampere through line, 500 ampere through line, you cannot pass 500 ampere through relay. Therefore, current transformer is a must, it is required. So, if it is a voltage operated relay, then potential transformer will be required. So, current transformer and or potential transformer, relay, 
circuit breaker and relevant uh, control circuit is the are the components of the switch gear or protective gear <coughs> we are seeing one relay r1 it is not single relay because this is a single line diagram actually there are three phases so r1 means four different relays r1 is a group of relays four relays are there one for r phase second for y third for b and fourth one is an earth fault relay or ground relay so r1 is protecting 132 kv transmission line further proceeding 132 by 66 kv transformer it is coming to 66 kv bus then 66 kv transmission line which is protected by over current and earth fault relay r2 then uh, 66 kv line is terminating on 66 by 11 kv uh, distribution transformer uh, the capacities are typical huh? 20 mva is a typical capacity it can be 30 mva it can be 50 mva it can be 10 mva right? but these are the typical capacities 11 from 11 kv bus 11 kv feeders are going 11 kv feeder is protected by relay r3 then i have got a pmt right pole mounted transformer or distribution transformer it is not protected by a relay there is no breaker there is no ct because the general rule of protection is that the protective relaying system should not cost more than 10 to I mean 5 to 10 percent of the cost of equipment to be protected. Mounted transformer and the distribution system would not be more than 5 10 lakhs of rupees. So, if it is 10 lakhs, I cannot spend more than 1 lakh rupees. And within 1 lakh rupees, you cannot have three things breaker, CT, and relay is not possible. So, the pole mounted transformer is protected by DO that is dropout fuse in the primary and on secondary side there can be a simple fuse or in modern days now people are using MCCB molded case circuit breaker. So this is a simple diagram 11 kV feeder 66 kV line 132 kV line are protected by relays because there you can spend that amount and then the relays have a comprehensive characteristic it can be set setting can be changed and uh, someday when we will start learning numerical relays we will see that what kind of enormous facilities are there which have changed the complete philosophy of protection complete scenario of protection whatever i had learned i have graduated in the year 1972 whatever i had learned Today's protective system is quite different and we all have to learn. All those who are interested in protection systems have to help learn these things. So, if I go further in transmission line, then there will be directional protection. I have to add the directional feature. If a transmission line radial feeder is fed from both ends, then simple overcurrent relays non-directional overcurrent relays are useless and i will have to add direction to it that means if the fault current is passing in a given direction as shown by arrowheads away from the bus then only the relay will operate if the current is passing towards the bus even if the current is fault current the relay will not operate even if the setting is uh, more than its pickup setting the relay will not operate so, for all these, how to decide the setting of the relay, how to decide flux setting, how to decide time setting and numerical relays, there are 17 different types of settings in overcurrent relays. How to decide those 17 settings, how to configure the relay for all these things is a subject to be learned, which we will not touch today, right. So, this is a radial feeder fed from both ends where directional property is required so in the earlier radial system no directional property is required directional property is required here too in parallel feeders right you are seeing that most of the feeders are parallel feeders in our system there is a row of transmission towers 
on one side there is ryb on another side there is ryb means two lines are going together from one place to other from one city to the another city some hundred kilometer away so if you have got parallel feeders then if one feeder can transmit 100 megawatt two feeders can transmit 200 megawatts and you can transmit more power from one end to the other and the demand of the day is every day you have you have to go on producing more and more power more and more energy because requirement for power and energy is uh, increasing day by day I, I remember that in the year 1960 when Gujarat and Maharashtra were uh, separated uh, in Gujarat there was Dwaran thermal power plant in which there were four sets of 62.5 megawatts each totaling to 250 megawatt installed capacity in Gujarat state today's installed capacity is somewhere around 25,000 megawatt in Gujarat state including uh, government and private uh, stakeholders it is it is somewhere around 25,000 from 250 you can think from 60 1960 to uh, 2020 within 60 years this is this is the 100 times more some, somewhere around 100 times more right so every day the power demand is increasing so need of parallel feeders is a must but these parallel feeders the relaying becomes protective system becomes little complicated there also you have to use directional relays r1 and r2 are non directional relays R3 and R4 are directional relays. Ring system. When you are feeding power to different areas of the uh, state, right? Then you see if you have got only one line, then if that line becomes faulty, then the other end will not get power. But if there is a ring system, then you can receive power from one way or the other way. Right? So ring network is very common. So here also directional property. That means Delay will operate only for a given direction is a must. Once again, the, the use of uh, directional property is a must. As we will proceed further someday, we will see that when one of the line trips, the power flow through all other remnant three lines will change. And if the power flow changes, I will have to change the setting of the relays. That means I will need relays not with single setting. That means single plug setting or single time setting. I will need that the relay should have group of setting, some four, five, or six groups of setting, so that the setting of the relays can be changed. The settings can adapt with the new requirement of the power system, right? Because power system is dynamic. Some line will trip, some generator will trip, some load will trip, and your requirements of the uh, setting your rated current through the transmission line the fault current when fault occurs everything will change and the relay setting has to adapt with that and therefore those adaptive relays uh, one has to learn when, when we go further uh, directional protection for cascaded parallel feeder fed from one end and cascaded parallel feeder fed from both hands once again directional properties are required here so this is just an overview of how what all we have to learn in overcurrent relaying so we have to take one by one in the next sessions to come the, the different protections in detail then we have also to take up how to calculate relay settings and, and all other all other things we have to take one by one. So now I go for transmission lines using distance relays because overcurrent relays have got certain limitations. Overcurrent relays are basically working on time grading principle. That is, the relay towards load is set for the minimum time, and as you go towards source, the time of operation goes on increasing. Therefore relay near the source is taking maximum time to operate and that is worse because fault near the source is worst fault current near the source is maximum there i cannot uh, take so much of time for the relay to operate but unfortunately over current relaying is basically time graded one thing right 
second thing in an interconnected system it becomes very difficult to set the relays many researches are going on how to coordinate the relays in the interconnected system and yet certain mal operations are bound to happen these mal operations are tagged as the sympathy trip so these sympathy trips are there so now uh, i have been seeing that in phd thesis some person some uh, gentleman has done his doctorate with the algorithm which gives three sympathy trips and if i do my phd with two sympathy trips my phd will be better because i have reduced sympathy trips but yet zero sympathy trip is is not possible that means uh, the mal operations are occurring when i protect the interconnected system power system with overcurrent relays therefore overcurrent relays are having limitations when the generation changes if more number of generators are there the current is more but if only one or two generators are running at night when the load is less then how to set the relay is a problem so because of this distance relays have come into operation distance relays have been found out they have been invented right distance relays have not these limitations therefore all transmission lines of 132 kv and beyond are primarily protected by distance relays however the overcurrent and earth fault relays are used as backup it's not so that they've gone they are used but as backup right 66 kv line distance relays cannot be used because of economic reasons only once again same reason i cannot spend more than 5 to 10 percent on protective system distance relays are costlier therefore i cannot use distance relay for 66 11 kv line but 132 kv line onwards always the distance relays are used uh, over current relays limitations uh, i i told but are readily available here for high zs by zl ratio over current relays cannot be applied in case of varying generating conditions you have to use voltage controlled over current relays and not normal relays which basically forms the distance protection over current relays use the principle of time grading therefore as i told you the relay near the power source operates slowest which is a big disadvantage setting of over current relays in an interconnected power system is very complicated that's what i i told and therefore uh, uh, high voltage transmission lines ehv transmission lines use distance protection we are in distance protection we are measuring distance up to fault from relay to fault but you see we are using electrical engineering distance is not an electrical quantity but the impedance of line is proportional to distance therefore distance relays are basically measuring impedance from relay to fault and impedance from relay to fault is known you can always know you can always find out you can always measure if i say that i want to protect the line from Ahmedabad to baroda then i know what is the impedance of that so if the fault occurs if the impedance is less than that set impedance then the relay will operate otherwise the relay will block so basically i am measuring the impedance in this impedance measurement there are so many problems so i i I would just want to list out the problems. I cannot talk on these problems. Once again, distance protection is a subject of subject to be taught over some eight hours of time. So we have to slowly learn this, right? We have to slowly find out how to set the relays, distance relays, because setting will be required. When you go to the field, you will have to set the relays so that they operate properly, they do not mal operate. And then now in that field of distance measurement WAMS have entered wide area measurement system PMU phase measurement units many many new things have entered uh, I am seeing that in the in the teaching syllabus now slowly many engineering institutions are incorporating these uh, most modern things but yet the most modern things for 
coming to the most modern things, you must have your fundamentals clear. So, these fundamentals are the must. So, the problems are direction, fault resistance. The fault has resistance in it. Fault is not just a fault. There will be some fault resistance. Line to ground fault means tower resistance, soil resistance, many resistances are there. If the fault occurs very close to the relay, then the relay will fail to operate. Closing faults, then what will you do? How will you find out the remedies? Overloads. If the line is overloaded, then the distance relay can maloperate, which should not happen. Power swings. When the system becomes unstable, the relays will wrongly measure the impedance. And many relays may maloperate unnecessarily. That should not happen. There are remedies to this. Some remedies are available. Some remedies are in the research field. Asymmetry of the fault current. Current is not symmetrical when fault occurs. It is uh, sinusoidal current superimposed on exponentially decaying DC offset. And this exponentially decaying DC offset makes the relay to overreach. PT fuse failure. Then if the PT fuse fails, secondary on PT secondary side, there is a fuse and if it fails, that means if it melts, then your distance protection will maloperate and PT fuse is a must to protect the PT. Teed lines, effect of delta Y transformer and protection of series compensated lines, that is the line having series capacitor. So that is also having its, its own problems. So, because of these problems, protection engineers prefer rather than simple distance protection, carrier aided distance protection, or many people call it line differential schemes. These schemes use blocking carrier, permissive under its transfer scheme, transfer trip scheme, carrier acceleration, and over its transfer trip scheme. Once again, uh, we would need a uh, number of hours to talk about what is carrier. What are the carrier equipment and how does the carrier work and how does the carrier aid the distance protection and what facilities are provided in modern numerical relays to, to, to work with this carrier aided distance scheme of protection. So that is that these are all the subjects to be learned in power system protection. So this is protection of transmission lines. Just just an overview, bird's eye view. A bird is traveling in the sky and he is seeing the land. We are traveling in the aeroplane and we are seeing the land. That is just an overview. How we can protect a large power transformer? How large power transformer can be protected? What are the faults in transformer? Faults in the auxiliary equipment, internal faults and external faults. What are the faults in auxiliary equipment? Oil leaks. Small leakage is there from the tank and slowly the oil is coming out. That is a difficulty. It leads to a problem after a very long time. So it's a minor fault. It does not damage the transformer immediately. But if you don't uh, sense it, if that is not taken care of, then it may lead to a drastic damage afterwards. So that has to be looked into. And many of these faults cannot be looked into by electrical relays. And therefore, a non-electrical relays or what is known as gas-operated relay or what is known as Bucos relay is a must. Deterioration of dielectric strength of oil. Obviously, as time passes, the dielectric strength will deteriorate. Failure of ventilation system. All large transformers are cooled by forced air cooling that is by use of fans and by forced oil cooling that is by use of oil pumps there can be some trouble in any of these or there can be some trouble in radiators radiators may chalk weakening of insulation between laminations of core and core bolt insulation failure improper joints or connections and interton faults faults within two turns of the same phase these are all minor or incipient faults, not damaging the transfer immediately, but they are required to be sensed. This is the relay which is used, Bucol's relay, very well known relay. Most of the institutions are teaching and most of the field engineers must be knowing 
is a very common relative. It uses only two flots. One flot, when it changes its buoyancy, it will give an alarm. And another flot for uh, very severe faults, which will trip the transformer. The first one is just giving an alarm so that you come to know that there is some minor fault within the transformer. External faults, another scheme. Internal fault, different scheme. Internal faults are to be taken care of very fast, immediately, within less than three cycles. The internal faults, uh, sorry, external faults are uh, using time graded relays. So, for overcurrent and earth fault protection, these are the main points. And these points also, I am just listing out so that you may come to know that this is all what is required to be learned. And then uh, you have to choose that in, in future classes what, what you would want to learn. So this is just an overview. Plug setting and time multiplier setting of overcurrent phase relays on secondary side is to be decided based on downstream relays. Phase relays on primary side are to be graded with phase relays on secondary side. But flux setting must be at least 110 to 125 percent of rated primary current. The transformer manufacturer will tell you how much overload the transformer can withstand. Based on that, you will decide the setting. Earth fault relay on primary side is not to be graded with same on secondary side. Because earth fault on in secondary is not seen by earth fault relay in primary if it is a delta y transformer. And in power system, we are using delta y transformer. Earth fault relay on primary side provides REF, restricted earth fault protection, to primary windings. To set the high set instantaneous unit, you have to take care of worst possible magnetizing inrush and Fault current reflected to primary side when there is a bolted three phase short circuit on secondary side. Both these things are addressed very typically, very differently by the advent of numerical relays. And it has changed the scenario of protection in case of power transformer also. For protection against earth fault, we use. REF restricted earth fault for star connected winding and bias differential protection. For generator transformer and large in interconnecting transformer in the substation when you are using when you are interconnecting two systems say 400 kV and 220 kV system over fluxing protection is applied. Numerical transformer relay has many facilities and uh, one has to use the facilities and for using those facilities, one has to learn the relay and one has to learn how to configure that relay, right? how to parameterize the relay that has to be learned. So having, having talked about that, uh, I would go to protection of large generators. I mean, this is all what is to be learnt in, in transformers. Generators are altogether different things, right? So before we go to generator protection, we should learn what all system is there, generation system, power plant system. There is a generator, you can see 15.75 kV, 210 megawatt generator. Obviously, the generator rotor, on the generator rotor, there is a field winding, which is shown, shown on right hand side. And it is supplied with DC current and there is a field breaker 52F. From generator, I am going to GT. The power is stepped up and then 52G. 52 is the number of breaker. It is an NC number, internationally known number. When you say 52, everybody will understand that you are talking of a breaker. Then it leads me to 220 kV in finite bus. But this generator does not run off itself. You have to run the generator from outside, externally. In thermal power plant, we are running by steam turbine. Steam turbine, uh, steam turbo alternators are two pole machines running at 3000 RPM. For running this steam turbine, you need steam. And for 
generating steam, you need a boiler. One needs a boiler. For boiler, for giving water to the boiler, you need boiler feed pump, a largest pump in the power plant. It's a mini power plant. Pump itself is mini power plant. In 210 megawatt generator, we are using three BFPs, each of 4 megawatt, 4,000 kilowatts, some 5,000 HP. Very large motor, very large motor. And it has got many protections, many auxiliary circuits. So how the power is generated, that is a subject by itself, some other time. Right? But all these auxiliaries, PA fan, primary air fan, force draft fan, induced draft fan, boiler feed pump, condensate extraction pump, circulating water pumps, coal handling plant, coal crushers, coal conveyor, all these things need power, right? Very large amount of power. It is said that roughly 10% of power is consumed by the auxiliaries. For 210 megawatt generator, I can say that about 21 megawatts. So, remnant of the power is only available to the public, to the consumers. So, that power is stepped by UATs, unit auxiliary transformers of so 15 MVA each. And then uh, that leads us to 6.6 .6 kV unit bus. So on 6.6 .6 kV unit bus, only two induction motors are shown, but not two, there are many motors. Uh, Two PA fans, two ID fans, two FT fans, three boiler feed pumps, six coal mills, many, many, many auxiliaries. One is shown just for showing. Then you will have UST, unit service transformer, 6600 by 415 volt, some 2000 kVA rating. It leads us to 415 volt unit bus, which feeds all 415 volt auxiliaries. There are many 415 volt auxiliaries in the power plant. Uh, there are around 500 odd number of motors in one unit, ranging from 0.25 HP, fractional horsepower, to as large as this 4 megawatt, as I, as I discussed. Right? Many induction motors are there and many other auxiliaries are there. Many heaters are there. The oil is required to be heated because oil is very, uh, viscosity is very, uh, not very good for uh, feeding from one place to, for conveying from one place to another place. So many, many auxiliaries are there. Many people are working to run this power plant. So this is there. Now, when the power, the generator trips, the power is not coming to 6.6 .6 kV bus. So if you want to restart the generator, you will have to start PFN, ID fan, FD fan, etc. We get that power from station bus. Station bus is getting power from station transformer ST 220 by 6.6 .6 kV or 7 kV and that is fed from infinite bus which is getting power from many other generating stations of the state. So that is always live. Not only that for restarting but for running many emergency auxiliaries. Air preheater motor is one emergency motor. Barring air motor is another. Uh, emergency which is to be done even when the plant stops so for that 6.6 .6 kv bus is to be made live so there is a tie breaker tie breaker connecting station bus and unit bus but station bus feeds many station auxiliaries also station auxiliary means the auxiliaries which are common to all plants coal and link plant is common to all units say in vanakpuri power plant there are eight units coal and link plant is single one plant feeding all eight units. But PFN, ID fan, FD fan, PFP are unit auxiliaries. So there are unit auxiliaries and station auxiliaries. So this is whole the business of power plant. So in transmission line, I was just tripping a breaker to isolate the fault. In generator, just to trip 52G, that is just to trip breaker does not give me isolation from fault. Because there is a fault within the generator, there is a fault within the generator transformer, which is continuously being fed, right. So I will have to disconnect the field, that means I will have to give signal to 52F, I will have to stop the turbine, trip the turbine, that means I have to close the steam stop valve, not allow the steam to enter the turbine, turbine will not generate mechanical power. Because I am stopping the steam, I did not generate steam, so I have to trip the boiler means flames in the boiler are to be shut off. So all this business is all class A protection. 
generator protection is class A, class B and class C which we cannot learn immediately today. We are just taking an overview but many things are to be done. So when generator protection operates in class A protection there are around 48 events occurring. To name few not all 48, 6 or 7, 52 G trips, 52 F trips, UAT breakers are tipping, all breakers of all motors are tipping and tie breaker will close. Tie breaker is usually open and tie breaker is closed as a part of sequence of class A protection. So this is all generator protection about. What are the major faults and abnormal conditions in case of generators? Failure of insulation of the stator winding, failure of insulation in the rotor winding, unbalanced loading, RYB currents are not equal, it is unbalanced loading, field failure, field of the generator fails, field is not supplied with DC current, field winding is not supplied with DC current. The generator which is connected to an infinite bus will act as an induction generator in the, that case and it is damaging to the generator and it is damaging to the power system as a whole. Over load, over voltage, failure of prime mover. There is a choke, the steam uh, valve feeding the, I mean steam line feeding the turbine is getting choked. Steam is not being fed to the turbine. Turbine does not generate mechanical power. But motor, I mean generator does not stop because generator will receive power from the bus, infinite bus. Generator will run as a synchronous motor and generator will drive turbine as a pump which is known as failure of prime mover. In power plant there are many mechanical things also which one has to learn. One cannot say that I am simply electrical engineer. Certain mechanical things are also required to be learned. Loss of synchronism our system becomes unstable and therefore the generators will go out of step. Generators can lose synchronism to certain extent up to its transient stability limit beyond which the generator has to be disconnected from the bus. That is known as false sleeping protection. Over speeding of a generator, under frequency and overheating. These are the different faults. I mean only two are faults, other are a first two are faults, other are abnormalities. For protection against all these, so many protections are there. Differential protection, inter-turn fault protection, 100% stator earth fault protection, overcurrent and earth fault protection, rotor earth fault protection, NPS protection, field failure, overload, over voltage, reverse power protection. Very important because all class B protections are rooted through reverse power protection. And reverse power protection is very costly because our setting is hardly one. When the power, uh, forward power is less than 0.5 to 3 percent of rated power, then the relay will sense. Sensing 3 percent is very difficult. Sensing 3 percent of the power is very difficult because in 210 megawatt, my current is 9050 ampere. Power means Vi cos phi, cos phi is constant, V will be constant. So what will reduce is only current. So current reduces to 1% of that 9000 ampere. My CTs are 10,000 by 5, 1% of 10,000 is 100 ampere, right? So 10,000 is 5, 100 is not reproduced perfectly to that 10,000 by 5 ratio. So I... I do not receive secondary juice at all. The secondary juice which is you available is used for excitation of the city only. So very specialized cities are required for reverse power protection. Right? Pole sleeping protection, backup impedance protection, and under frequency protection. These are the protections for generator, and we end with generator here. I mean just to list what all to be learned in generator protection. In larger uh, induction motors, there will be faults in induction motor and there will be abnormalities. What are the abnormalities? Overloading, single phasing, very common. One of the phase gets disconnected. 
unbalanced currents rib currents are not equal reversed phase sequence motor is connected instead of rib it is connected rby right then motor will run in the reverse direction nothing happens to the motor but problem is with the process the process that the motor controls will be getting the reversed i hope you can understand you are uh, in the lift on the fourth floor and you are pushing the button for seventh floor and the lift leads you to ground floor rather than seventh floor aapka process the process your process will get reversed the boiler feed pump is uh, pumping water from uh, deaerator to the boiler feed pump uh, boiler drum instead it will take water from boiler drum and feed it to the deaerator reverse process that is the problem under voltage stalling is a very big problem and it's a very uh, hot problem nowadays because stalling uh, uh, unhealthy start unhealthy when the motor stalls when it is started when the motor is being overloaded when it is started unhealthy start is a problem under research right excessive start time motor takes more time than designed time number of starts limitation you cannot start the induction motor many times in hour manufacturer will tell that you can start only four times in an hour that means if you start fifth time then the motor uh, the life expectancy gets reduced so the relay has to provide this uh, protection against number of start that means if you have started four times fifth time the relay will not allow you to start even if you push the button minimum time between two starts once you have started you cannot start just within 3 minutes if 5 minutes are required to be allowed you have to allow those 5 minutes so uh, these are i mean all modern numerical relays have facilities against all these uh, abnormalities loss of load that means loss uh, motor loses load features provided in numerical motor protection relays are programmable scheme logics measurements relay is capable to measure all quantities binary inputs and outputs for many configurable works circuit breaker failure protection right if the relay gives signal to the breaker and breaker does not trip then relay monitors that breaker failure also event recording fault recording and oscillography of the uh, voltage currents and fault voltages uh, these are to be learned in induction motor in protective ct and pt the ct and pt which are feeding to the relays are also very important what all you have to learn is construction of ct magnetizing characteristics of ct very important magnetization characteristics are done as an experiment in engineering institutions but uh, i have seen that uh, very rarely the students uh, know the, the the magnitude of importance of that magnetizing characters magnetizing characteristic is an x ray of ct you can know everything about ct 1 to 10 everything about ct using simple magnetization characteristic right but uh, i mean very rarely i mean those who are working in the industries they know that it is an x ray for ct difference is between measurement ct and protective ct the ct which measures the current or volt uh, current or gives the uh, current to the current coil of ct uh, watt meter or current coil of energy meter that ct is different ct used for protection ct core which is used for protection is of a different kind how do the ct errors occur and how you can minimize calculation of ct accuracy factors to be considered while selecting a ct for a given application in given substation you have to procure the ct how you will procure what specifications you will prepare how you will decide what kind of ct you need right that is very important in field life problems encountered in ct and specifications prepared for ct while procuring a ct these all things are to be learned in ct similarly for pt equivalent circuit construction uh, 
capacitor voltage transformer CVT, which is very common nowadays. These are to be like the specifications of voltage transformer. So, this is what I had decided to cover. Uh, circuit breaker is also a part of uh, protective system. I have not covered today. Uh, I wanted to cover so much. It was preparation for one full hour. It is sharp. Well, so exact one hour. If you want to learn power system protection to become expert in the subject, then see the news in Adapt Me. Uh, download the app. And you will be seeing many things every day, every month, something new in the app. Thank you all. Thank you for the great presentation. We have a couple of questions. Uh, not, uh, I'm sorry to say, a couple of there are a uh, few questions. Uh, I'll uh, say loudly one by one. So there's a question by Kush, why power generation at 11 kV? Uh, why don't we use 66 and 132 kV? Question, as I understand, is why power generation is at 11 or 15.75 or 22 kV? And why not at 66 or 132 kV directly so that uh, we may not ha have to, we may not have to use GT, generator transformer. The generator uh, particularly steam turbo alternator is already running at 3000 rpm so all rotor parts are highly stressed because of centrifugal forces very heavy mechanical forces are already there on the generator if you add to those forces electrical if you increase the voltage uh, you might be knowing that uh, v voltage and C are uh, connected. The capacitance and voltage are connected. And force and capacitance are connected. If you increase the voltage, the <coughs> if you increase the voltage, Q is equal to CV, charge Q is equal to CV, capacitance times the voltage. And Q is the reason of force. Coulomb had proved that the force generated is Q1, Q2 by epsilon R square. So, large electrical forces are developed when you increase the voltage. So, on one side already large mechanical forces are there. If you increase the mechanical forces, it is not technically feasible. And therefore, in power system generation at a voltage more than 22 kV, or at the most 25 kV is not done anywhere in India and in other countries too. 33 kV is according to me under research. Beyond 33 kV, generator is not, generation is not heard of. Therefore, stepping up is a must. Yes, please, if you are satisfied. Uh, yes, there, there are uh, many questions. So, we will try to address uh, one by one if uh, because of... Uh... A time constraint. Uh, there is a good question. Uh, loss of synchronism and loss of excitation are they considered to be the same because both can cause pole slipping? Uh, loss of excitation, yes, true. That it is also pole slipping. And uh, pole slipping, that is loss of synchronism, is also pole slipping. Loss of excitation is also both are the speed of the generator in both the cases are getting increased but their consequences are different and their protection has to be applied at different times the time within which the protection has to be applied are altogether different so both cannot mix when pole slips the field failure protection should not operate and if field fails the pole slipping protection should not operate pole slipping protection will operate only when the generator loses transient stability limit and transient stability limit you can calculate by equal area criterion and many other things which you would have learned in power system operation and control right so you have to treat the generator before critical clearing time and that critical clearing time is comparatively quite large with reference to field failure in field failure 
the stator current is increasing, rotor current is increasing and therefore there is a question of overheating. So there once again the time is learned. But when field fails, the generator draws reactive power from the system. If the generator is quite large, some 500 megawatt, it needs, it does not generate reactive power on one hand. And on the other hand, we are consuming reactive power from the system. So total loss of reactive power on the system is double. If power system cannot supply this requirement of reactive power, then the whole power system will become unstable field of one generator has failed it leads to complete collapse of system that means it leads to complete collapse of state grid and therefore protection is instantaneous in this case in pole slipping instantaneous protection is not required therefore these two protections have different consequences different relaying systems are used and both relaying system have to be independent of each other one system should not operate in case of the other. There was a very important occurrence in USA. Some girl touched by no doubt wooden stick touched on 132 kV line, and because of that, the uh, uh, field failed. I mean, there was uh, loss of synchronism, and because of loss of synchronism, field failure really had mal operated. Very, very early days I am talking about in USA. This was a very well known collapse of uh, all five power companies all throughout USA. People analyze that and field failure characteristic wall was just a more relay having diameter as negative y axis but instead from that day onwards both slipping characteristic was shifted little downwards. It was an offset more relay. Some offset is equal to xt dash by 2 was applied. Uh, my teacher Dr. Date was telling that this offset why this offset has been provided there is no i mean so to say directly technical reason there is a statistical or historical reason the incident happened in us and therefore uh, this offset now onwards you will see that all field failure relays are provided with an offset so that field failure relay does not mal operate in case of uh, pole slipping it didn't operate once upon a time yes please uh, there is another question, uh, reverse power for steam turbine and gas turbine, is there any different in the setting? Uh, I think STG is more sensitive. Uh, any reason? Steam turbine and? A gas turbine. Gas turbine, yes. Is there any different reversal setting for the reverse power? power? In, true. Reversal of power in steam turbine, reversal power in gas turbine, re reversal of power when you are using hydro turbine, they are all uh, in a way different uh, and different settings are to be applied in this case. Uh, therefore, uh, the uh, reversal settings in, in case of steam turbine it is 0.5% of rated power and in, in case of uh, uh, other hydro turbines and other turbines it is uh, gas turbines it is somewhere around 3% of rated power so some settings are little different true yes please uh the next question is why nps protection is not applied to large transformer nps protection is not applied to large transformers because when negative phase sequence occurs negative phase sequence means the uh, the rotating magnetic field is produced in reverse direction because of this reversal of direction in the rotating magnetic field generator rotor is running in the same direction but the rotating magnetic field part of the rotating magnetic field due to nps currents will rotate in the reverse direction that leads to 200 percent sleep that is double frequency rotor induced currents are produced in the rotors of generator so nps currents are harmful to all dynamic machines induction 
motor, induction generator, synchronous motor, synchronous generator, etc. It is not harmful to any static equipment that is transmission line or transformer. Therefore, NPS protection need not be specially provided to any static components. Transformer is a static equipment. Please. Yep, uh, I think that answers the question. The next question is the uh, parenti effect will consider as fault or abnormality. Parenti effect. Parenti effect is not a fault. It is an abnormality. That is receiving end voltage is more than sending end voltage. When there is uh, no load on the line or there is light load on the line, transmission line. So sending end voltage uh, receiving end voltage will be more than sending end voltage so the insulators on the receiving end will be damaged because of over voltage because in case of foreign effect in the worst case it can be as large as 2.5 per unit voltage can be produced so uh, you have to protect the problem and protection of the problem is using the shunt inductors shunt inductors are used Shunt inductors are used for protecting against parenti effect and shunt capacitors are used to pro, uh, improve the power factor and to improve the regulation. So shunt capacitors and shunt inductors both are there many capacitors and many inductors and they are made on by thyristors. So thyristorized control of capacitors and inductors is what is used and these thyristors are controlled by microprocessors nowadays so microprocessor controlled or processor controlled uh, thyristor controlled uh, inductor and capacitor uh, banks are used for protection against ferrant effect and all yes please uh, the next question is uh, please discuss uh, briefly the prime mover failure because of sub synchronous resonance I have not heard of if uh, some somebody in the uh, in the audience can reply because prime mover failure I have heard of only in case of uh, chalking of I mean whatever has occurred in the field till many days that I have been hearing uh, that is only due to uh, the steam wall chalking that is the steam does not enter the turbine for steam turbines similarly water does not enter the hydro turbine or gas does not enter the gas turbine mechanical power generated by turbine is lost so resonance is an electrical phenomenon and uh, this turbine failure that is turbine mechanical power failure is a mechanical event so subsynchronous resonance etc occurs in case of transformers over voltage is in case of transformer do occur because of resonance but in 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 case of generators or particularly this uh, reverse power i have not heard of this resonance principles The next question is magnetization characteristics of CT. How to make the connection of primary side and the secondary side and which precautions we have to take? Magnetization characteristic of CT, uh, one has to feed a very low voltage on the secondary side because secondary is very easily available because you have to, in, in engineering colleges, we are doing on small cities. But in real power system, we have to do for 220 or 400 kV CT. The primary terminal is around uh, one, on, one and a half meter or two meter up height. Right? So there you cannot reach. We are keeping primary open. We are not connecting primary at all. And secondary, we are connecting through uh, auto transformer and small uh, auxiliary transformer of hardly one kVA. Uh, 230 by 40 volt or 230 by 15 volt 230 volt is being controlled through auto transformer and that means an auto transformer 
सिंगल फेज ऑटो ट्रांसफार्मर कनेक्टेड टू टू थर्टी वोल्ट एसी सप्लाई आउटपुट ऑफ ऑटो ट्रांसफार्मर टू एन ऑक्सिलरी ट्रांसफार्मर टू थर्टी बाई फिफ्टीन वोल्ट एंड देन वी आर जस्ट कनेक्टिंग डिजिटल एमीटर एंड डिजिटल वोल्ट मीटर और डिजिटल मल्टी मीटर फॉर मेजरिंग करंट ओपन सर्किट करंट एक्साइटेशन करंट आई ई एंड ई एस वी ओ सी ओपन सर्किट वोल्टेज ओनली मेनी नंबर ऑफ रीडिंग सम टेन ट्वेंटी टेन फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी रीडिंग आर टेकन सो दैट वी कैन प्लॉट द सेचुरेशन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑल्सो वी कैन रीच द सेचुरेशन रीजियन ऑल्सो दैट मच एंड सर्टन कैलकुलेशन will will lead you to know everything about ct that is you will know ct accuracy you will know whether ct burden which is written on the nameplate is correct or not whether ct can take that burden or not right and whether the ct can reproduce up to alf accuracy limit factor say alf is mentioned at 10 so it is 100 bar 1 ct so 100 is reproduced as 1 whether 1000 is reproduced as 10 or not so that we have not to pass really 1000 ampere current without doing that we will just come to know from excitation characteristic whether alf mentioned on the nameplate is correct or not whatever is mentioned by the manufacturer whether it is correct or wrong that can be uh, found out by excitation characteristic and some calculation some uh, computation work is required for which we have to separately learn ct and pt ct and pt uh, to learn completely would take some 2 or 2 and a half hours of time there is yes. there is one uh, good question and it always intrigued me as well why every voltage level in power system is in multiplication of 11 very good question i asked this question to my my uh, my guru i i tell my guru rather than teacher uh, dr date whom i adore Uh, very much and he replied me when he was going to going for a cup of tea so just while he was going for a cup of tea and i was walking with him and i told sir can i ask you that certainly you can ask this question while on the walk only he replied he was very quick in replying questions every equipment should withstand 10% of over voltage 10% of over voltage so if i take one per unit 10% over voltage takes me to 1.1 which is a multiple of 11 which is a multiple of 11 so in india we are using 11 66 132 220 but 400 is not multiple of 11 765 kv is not multiple of 11 next voltage 1200 kv the next voltage is not multiple of 11 because in foreign countries they are using this voltage and you have to use the same voltage because otherwise standardization becomes difficult the process of standardization process of uh, finding out the value of uh, uh, high voltage withstand impulse voltage withstand and you will have to have special impulse generator and special high voltage transformers which becomes very difficult therefore uh, beyond 220 the voltages are not multiple of 11 yes please that's that's a good explanation the other next question is what would be the reason that the pipe connecting transformer tank and conservator tank including buckles uh, is around 11 degrees i'm sorry i i don't know the reason about the about the angle but obviously the conservator is at a higher height that angle 11 degree if the, somebody in the audience knows you should you should Uh, i think it's a temperature or the angle i temp somebody i think you told angle 11 degrees 11 degrees means temperature temperature oil will become heated when when the current will pass there is no i mean oil will become heated and uh, the bucol is is the, is the angle inclination uh, that's the clarification uh, angle Uh, angle any 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 specific technical reason if at all it is 11 degree uh, i don't have any idea but that is for certain that the uh, conservator tank has to be higher than should be at a height more than the tank because uh, when the oil becomes heated the gases will go up and at the, as it goes up it will enter the bucol relay change the buoyancy and therefore the bucol will uh, sound an alarm so 
the conservator tank is certainly at a higher height than the tank of the transformer and in the pipeline uh, from transformer tank to conservator tank there is a Buchholz relay. In the conservator tank there is a gas uh, I mean the explosion vent also that is gas release device if at all uh, oil turns into gas large amount because of internal cold it can explode the transformer so to avoid that the, the explosion vent is there in the in the uh, conservator tank so for all these things because gas will uh, have tendency to go up obviously the uh, the conservator tank is the highest point in the transformer that much i know yes please uh, uh, the other good question is what are the information we get from the magnetization curve for industrial applications magnetization curve of ct question doesn't uh, specify that uh, the magnetization curve of what that has to be specified magnetization curve of transformer is also there with ct yes uh, it is it is said that it is about ct so what is the question about magnetization characteristics of ct what information we get correct what information do we get uh, from magnetization curve of ct for industrial applications all, all information the the accuracy of the ct we have say we have asked for 1% accuracy or 2% accuracy so uh, it, they will always write that the ct is accurate up to 2% but then how to confirm that it is really 2% or not that means if 100 per 1 ct is there then within plus or minus 2% it is re reproducing or not how to find then say you you have asked for alf 10 accuracy limit factor 10 that means 100 is reproduced as 1000 has to be reproduced as 10 with that accuracy limit whether it is done or not and we are asking for 50 va ct then whether the ct can take 50 va burden or not all these things you can know without really burdening you have not to burden the ct by 50 va when I say 100 is 1000 is 10 or not, so for that you not to, not to pass 1000 ampere to city primary without really passing large current, without really burdening the city. Uh, actually, you can know everything about city. That is accuracy, uh, accuracy of the city, burden of the city, ALF of the city, knee point voltage of the city. All these are very important industrial requirements. What is the magnetization current at knee point voltage? What is the magnetization current at half the knee point voltage? What is the magnetization current at one fourth the knee point voltage? These are all required to be mentioned while specifying the CT. And manufacturer has to write the values for knowledge of the user. And all these things he will specify. But whether it is really so or not, that one can confirm from magnetization characteristic or what is known as uh, the saturation characteristic of CT. Yes, please. Uh, the uh, one question is uh, for directional OCEF, the empty angle, how do we get 30 degrees, 45 degrees, etc.? Or it's a default or it's, it's a typical value? Directional overcurrent relays are using maximum torque angle that means the angle at which angle between voltage and current at which torque is maximum is known as characteristic angle or mta this mta uh, is usually 30 60 or 90 which is a multiple of 30 30 60 or 90 one can adjust by only ctpt connections nothing is done in the relay for 30, 60 or 90, uh, time would not permit me to actually show to you the connections, uh, but uh, 30, 60 or 90 is possible. If you want to adjust 70, then you have to do something in the relay design. I mean, you have to ask to the relay manufacturer that I want 70. So, he will do something in the relay design and what does he do? That also can be talked about. 
but right now the time would not permit. But I would tell the audience that in numerical relay, they are giving from minus 180 to plus 180 in steps of 1 degree. Maximum torque angle settable from minus 180 to plus 180 in steps of just 1 degree. Very good, uh, so to say, uh, the uh, precision is available in uh, numerical relays, modern numerical relays which are available in market. All makes Siemens, ABB, uh, LNT, uh, uh, Cell, Schweizer Engineering Limited, and uh, this uh, uh, Schneider. All, all very well known relay manufacturers are giving relays like this. Yes, please. Uh, the next uh, question, I think we can take one question. Uh, the standard voltage is 220 kV, but I see some substation naming 230 kV. What is the reason behind it? In India, there is no 230 kV. In, in other countries, 230 kV is there. In India, I have not heard of 230 kV anywhere. Uh, in 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 uh, UK, 110 kV is also there. So in USA, in USSR, there are many other voltages on the lower side which are available. 400, 765 are throughout common in the world, but lower high voltages are different in different countries, and they have their own standards. In India, it is. 1166, 132, and 220 only. 230, if you have seen, say, I think, uh, I think the time is in, uh, sorry to interrupt. I think the time is uh, against uh, this time. So uh, I thank you everyone for participating in the questions. We'll try to answer them. If the time permits, uh, we will uh, put some uh, polls uh, on the screen. We request you to. Uh, participate in the answer so that we can improvise on the next sessions. Thank you for the uh, votes. There is another uh, poll going in. If uh, kindly respond to this so that we can improvise for the next sessions. I go on issues up. I can see people are voting. Thank you for the votes. That's the feedback uh, to the team. And we see a uh, good number of votes coming in. And thank you for the uh, generous ratings. Uh, we will definitely improve for the uh, lower stars given. And uh, we will uh, request uh, participants to uh, reach out to us so that we can improve on, on the uh, ratings where we uh, do not there's a small poll on the next topics you would like to get it covered uh, if uh, anyone is interested in or, or give priorities uh, we would appreciate if uh, that gives us the feedback on the next sessions uh, this will be the uh, sessions we are we are planning Thank you once again. We are getting good number of uh, responses, and it's really appreciated uh, to all the participants to, uh, of uh, seeing us, staying us for more than one and a half hours, and uh, answering these uh, questions. That really appreciated. Uh, uh, the last question is the next modules we would be planning on to the uh, adapt me. So if you could kindly vote on this as well. And I request the presenter to get to the next slide, the last one. Uh, there is a special announcement. Uh, can we have the last slide? Uh, we, we are, uh, and uh, one more uh, slide. I think there's one uh, announcement to be made by Adapt Me team. Yes, thank you. Uh, 
for all the audience out there, we are launching module three, uh, protection of transmission lines with relays uh, on Adapt.me. Uh, this app is right now available on Play Store, Google Play Store. Uh, very soon we will be coming up with the iOS version and the web app. Uh, for uh, a good gesture from the author and our team, we are uh, launching a 20% discount on all the modules and it is valid for next uh, few days. Uh, we Thank you each and everyone for your uh, uh, generous participation and uh, giving us uh, very valuable time. Uh, we will improve on the feedbacks. If any question we have left unanswered, we will uh, reach out to each and everyone individually and we'll request uh, Professor Bhune Shoza to reach out on individual basis. We once again, thank you very much uh, for joining. Thank you, have a nice day.